Behind me, I've got my 1972 Jeep Commando, and today I'm gonna to be talking about everything I did to four link the back. Here we go. Money worm. If you've been following along with this build, you'll know I'm doing everything as budget conscious as I can, but in that, originally I built the rear with leaf springs, and the first time I took it out, this is what happened. After I broke the rear yoke, the leaf springs were completely shot, I had some decisions to make. I needed to decide whether I replaced the leaf springs with newer ones that were in better condition, or if I went ahead and just took the time, four-linked it, and got rid of leaf springs altogether. My hopes with that was if I swapped to a four-link that I would no longer have axle wrap, I'd have a little bit better ride, and I'd have more adjustability in my suspension itself. So far, that's looking like it's pretty true. If you want to see my full thoughts on it, watch this video here. I did a full breakdown on leaf springs versus a four link suspension and what I thought the pros and cons were. And ultimately for this build, I felt like a four link in the rear was the way to go. So let me dive in today on this video about everything I did to get the rear of the suspension four linked. Now there's a lot of different aspects to cover when it comes to the four link. I'm going to try to put out a few more videos, but I really would like your guys' input on details that you want, specifics you want to see. Today, I'm going to be mostly covering the overall design, showing you what different things look like, showing you some of the attachment points, some high-level theory on why this worked, give you some ideas, hopefully, for those of you looking to fabricate a four-link at home. These things can be intimidating, and so I really wanted to show you what I did, maybe give you some ideas, because I know for me, that's always super helpful is to get ideas, look at other people's work, see how they design some things, steal some inspiration. And so hopefully this video will help you in that way. When it came to the four link, one of the first things I had to decide was what style of four link I wanted. I understand there's some pros and cons to each of the different kinds. Packaging ultimately plays a huge factor as well on which one you're going to choose. And for me, I went through a bunch of the different ideas and ultimately landed on a double triangulated four-link. So the different options, if you're not familiar, you have a single triangulated four-link. Typically with that, you're gonna have lower links that run straight with the frame. And the uppers are triangulated in, and that creates the triangulation to keep the axle centered and everything moves. The other option, which I didn't consider because these frames are really narrow, packaging's already super difficult, was a parallel four link. And the reason for that is then you would need a track bar. I don't know, just packaging was not gonna work for this application. I've seen plenty of single and a few double triangulated, but again, I thought the double was perfect for this. So let me show you what all the bracketry looks like, get underneath and give you the ins and outs of how I designed the double triangulated four link on this commando. Starting at the front of the four link, and I made that cross member. I think that worked out really well. Used a Barnes bracket that prefab slid right over some inch and three quarter DOM tubing. So I already had that laying around, keeping the cost low. I al already had aluminum links. So Facebook finds, I've been holding off on those. I've had to work around the dimensions of those lower links. This packaged out really nicely. So I took it from there. I actually then as well, made some supports that went from that cross member to the upper link mounts. And so with that, that ties everything in together really nicely. It keeps that cross member from wanting to twist back and forth. Should provide plenty of structure that way. Then when it came to the upper mounts on the frame, a really important thing on these commandos are the frames are super narrow. And so to offset that, there's a couple things you need to do. And I did it in the front for the three link as well. But what really helps is to actually take the bracket, cut it down and put the nuts, weld the nut plate to the inside of the frame because that makes everything slide over and tuck really nicely and gives you a, a lot of extra room to get more triangulation and really the packaging work a lot nicer. Now, the other thing I did in the back though is Barnes now actually sells 10 degree joints and they sell them in two different sizes. So they sell them in a larger size and then a smaller one. Since I'm only running a 35 inch tall tire, I'm not gonna be beating this thing like crazy. I felt the smaller joint should hold up just fine. Only time will tell, but it did get me quite a bit of extra 
space in between the frame rail. I'll look up the difference and put it right here. It was about this many inches, whatever. So that's everything for the frame side. Make sure to use nut certs to get them as close to the frame as you can. The triangulation works really nicely. Brace, support, tie everything together the best you can. Now moving to the axle side of things, it came, I bought a TJ Dana 44. I felt like it was a decent upgrade over the Chrysler eight and a quarter. It was already geared to 488 gears. It came with a truss, had an ARB locker, blah, 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 all the things. And so it worked out really nicely for me to just go ahead and pick that up. Same bolt pattern that I already had. So again, it checked a lot of the boxes for me as far as simplicity goes. Then I cleaned all the old brackets off. I made a full truss myself, used plate steel, gusseted it all up um, and made sure that worked out. I actually ordered some Jeep TJ coil spring buckets. I thought those were gonna slide over the frame really nicely, but it didn't. I had to cut the frame brackets off and I kept only the coil buckets. And if I was to do it again, I'd probably just use plate or order something from Barnes or something like that. But I really wanted to try to make it look OEM. I also wanted to try to utilize the TJ bump stops. So I thought it was gonna be a great idea. It wasn't super expensive, but looking back, I would definitely do it differently. It took a lot of time to clean up those brackets. And I don't know if the product's really better than it could have been. So that was what I did for the coil springs. I made a, a low profile truss for the lower section, used some steel tube, made a catch for it, got all that done, used the coil buckets up top, mounted those to the frame. So again, that was what I did for the coil springs. Then, something I thought was pretty clever is in the truss, I went ahead and integrated and supported and tied it all together with the sway bar links. So those come down and they actually attach to that truss, fit in pretty nicely. I actually took some round tube, cut it in half, and it gave me a nice little pocket to fit a wrench in. And so all of those things work out as far as a packaging perspective goes. The lower link on, on the axle for the lower mounts, those are just Barnes four wheel drive mounts. Pretty straightforward for those as well. Um, and then the sway bar, what's cool with it, I did it on the front as well. And this thing I seem to like that seems to work well for packaging and be the most cost effective is to actually get a TJ anti-rock sway bar. They seem to be just about the right width. They seem to fit nicely. Um, the biggest thing with those is that you might have to modify them a little bit. I already had one that was modified, so it's bent out in a shape that kind of cleared everything in the back. So that worked out pretty sweet, I think. And to make those work, all I've done, I ordered a Max Speeding Rods, the off-brand Amazon Universal Anti-Rock Sway Bar, really cheap. Then you order some bushings. Um, I'll leave links and show part numbers here for all that. You use inch and three quarter 0.095 wall tubing, put the bushings in, cut it to length, and you've got a sway bar that you can just mount however you want to. And so that is what I did in the back for the sway bar. I've talked about the upper links, the lower links at the axle, the coil springs. So that's what all the packaging ended up looking like on the back of this. Now, the last thing that was a little bit trickier was figuring out how to mount the shocks. And so when it came to shock placement, I knew I was gonna have to work through clearancing everything else. I found the only place I could really find, and I wanted to keep them up out of the rocks, obviously. And so I put them on the back side of the axle and then tied it up into the tub itself. I've widened the back seat, some of those things. So it doesn't clear well to run it up through and tie it to the cage. So what I ended up doing is running a plate, mounting the shock to the tub, and then I made a gusset on, from the cage to the tub to plate that in between. And so that I'm hoping is gonna work out. Time will only tell on that. Another thing that was really helpful for me from a cost savings perspective was to actually utilize, I think a three inch JLU lift shock. I just ordered some Bilstein. They were a hundred bucks a piece, but they gave me 12 inches of travel. So I should have all kinds of travel in the back here and they mounted up pretty nicely. I hope this gave you a good idea of what it takes to link your Jeep, gave you some inspiration on some different design aspects and gave you some encouragement to maybe try it yourself. 
I'm hoping to do another video to go in depth about all the things I learned about a link suspension, go into details about the numbers. If there's anything else that you're wanting in that video, make sure to leave some comments below. And then I'm also gonna do a full price breakdown on how I was able to build this entire four link pretty cheaply. I will definitely argue, I had some comments, there's no way you can do it under a thousand bucks. There's no way you can do this. There's no way you can do that. I will tell you, if I am not below a thousand bucks on the rear suspension on this, I'm going to be very surprised. So look for that video. Guys, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, do all the fun stuff. Leave some comments. All right. Money